One of the things I'm gonna show you today, or the thing I'm gonna show you today, is how to cook what I call my staple in my whole food plant-based diet, and that is beans. And in this case, I'm showing you garbanzo beans. I'm going to just start it, and then I'll get back to you at the end and show you what I do to store them. I actually keep them in the freezer like a bag of, um, oh gosh, corn. In other words, they're frozen separately. They're in a freezer baggie and I can unzip it and pull out hands full for a hummus or for a curry um, to defrost and put on my daily salad. And it's a convenient way to do it. So let's get started. I had two pounds of chickpeas, garbanzo beans. They look a lot just like this when they're dry, except that they're more wrinkled. And I, um, let me back up. Two pounds is about four cups. And I had two pounds. By the time I soak them, they double or triple that amount. So I'm gonna put them in my eight um, Instant Pot. I love the Instant Pot because it's easy. I get to walk away and it takes care of itself. Also, pressure cooked beans tend to have their most difficult to digest parts broken down and for some people they're easier to eat. You can also control the sodium. When you buy canned beans, you pay more for beans that have um, low sodium or they're harder to find. And so it's just easy to do. This morning before we went on our walk up the mountain, that's about an hour um, that we go up a local mountain, a four mile path. I put on the beans to soak, not put them on, but I put them in a bowl to soak and um, they're ready now. It's what, 4.30 and so what is that? A nine hour soak, that's long enough. I have a bag of kombu. I bought some online, they came from Korea and on the back there was a warning that there could be heavy metals in the kombu, boom, that went out to my compost pile. And this is from Japan, hand harvested, cold, clear waters. Um, I know they had a nuclear spill there, but um, I trust this brand. And the point of the kombu, it's a sea vegetable, is that you add some minerals, you only need a half of, you know what, I'm gonna throw the whole thing in. Um, you get some minerals from it, and some say that it makes the beans easier to digest. I like a little bit of flavor, that's that um, little bit of salty um, umami that I get from it. I'm also going to add some herbs. I have a couple of bay leaves. I grow a little bay plant. It's uh, Laurus nobilis, that's um, bay laurel, and I keep it Oh gosh, just a few feet off the ground, otherwise it'll become a 60 foot tree. Uh, but that way I have fresh bay leaves. I have some oregano, um, some call it margarine oregano. I'm gonna throw that in. I have some um, rosemary, I'm gonna throw that in. And I'm also putting in, and I don't have to do any of that. I could just leave it plain, especially if I I'm not going to use the what they call pot liquor. That means the, the juice from the, or the broth from the beans, but I like it. You can put that in rice. You can put use it to cook vegetables. I think it's really flavorful. And I'm gonna put a celery, a carrot, boom. And then I'm gonna sink this onion. If I chop up the onion, even have it, by the time I get it out of there, I'm fishing it out and it's falling apart. So I just sort of quartered it and kept the stem intact and I'm going to bury it in there, but I'll be able to get it out easily. On top, I'm going to put four cloves of peeled garlic. And I like a little spice, so I have a couple of dried uh, Thai peppers I'm going to put in. Now, in the um, pressure cooker, when you're making beans, you don't have to cover them with water uh, the way you would in a pot unless you want plenty of pot liquor. So I'm starting with eight cups of water and oops, it's coming to just even with the beans and I'm gonna leave it at that. I want the pot liquor to be concentrated. I don't want a lot of it. Sometimes I can use it for another super stew, but I already have that in the freezer. You know what? 
I'm going to put a little bit more because it wasn't covering the vegetables. And we're set. I don't know if you knew this, but your Instant Pot has that handy feature that allows you to do something with this big awkward cover. Put it on, snap it in, set pressure cook. It's on high. I'm going to set this because they've been um, soaked. I'm going to set this for 18 minutes and that's all. With this pressure cooker, it's going to start. I have a six quart as well and I do the maneuvering and then I push start. And in this case, I don't have to. And you heard that beep, beep, beep. That was saying to me, okay, we followed instructions. We're on. I'm going to let this cook. It, it's going to take a while to come up to pressure. I'm going to let it cook. I'm going to let it naturally release for at least 20 minutes. Um, and then we're done. Now, if I didn't want a natural release, I would let it cook longer. I would have it cook, oh, six minutes longer. And then I would release it within five minutes of cooking. But I like to do it this way, and I think it's the best way. And I have a recommendation for you. Jill Nissenau is a, uh, has a graduate degree in science, and she's a registered dietitian. I really like her book. Vegan Under Pressure. Uh, she's creative, she writes well, her recipes um, turn out deliciously, and um, that's a recommendation. Vegan Under Pressure, Jill Nissanow, you'll find it in Amazon, and I'll talk to you in just a bit. Hi, I'm back. So the Instant Pot came to pressure, went through 18 minutes, Release pressure or, or um, natural release for 20 minutes. I took off the pressure. Everything was done, oh gosh, actually a couple of hours ago. I've unplugged the pot, that's why it doesn't have the light on. And this is what it looks like inside. Can you see that? You can even see my scored onion. So I'm going to lift the things out that I'm not going to use into my compost bin. And that's the celery. Oh, look what happens to the kombu. It's just um, kind of rubbery. I've tasted it before because I really like it, but I decided I'm not gonna eat it. Um, don't know why, but I didn't. And I'm getting that garlic out, a couple of peppers, because I put these things right on top. They're very easy to find. And, here, let me tilt it a little bit. And get the rosemary out, my bay leaf. The carrot. There's a little bit of um, herb that sort of disintegrated in there, but that's okay. All right, now I've got these beautiful um, chickpeas. The way I know they're done is I squeeze them and it feels it feels firm enough, but they break down immediately. Mm. They're really flavorful because of the broth. And then this is my setup. You saw that, well, actually I've taken the, the cover off and I washed it. Put that back on, put this back. And I have a strainer, don't use plastic. You don't want hot things going through plastic. It displaces some of the plastic and the chemical and you don't need that. And I'm going to pour this still hot broth and beans into a bowl. And I'm going to let them, this continue to drain for a while because What's going to happen is that I'm going to pour them onto my prepared cookie sheet. This is a cookie sheet with a piece of parchment paper on it. And I've done it without the parchment paper and I just had to slide a thin spatula under because the, the chickpeas separate from the frozen tray really easily. But this is even easier. I have a wide freezer at the bottom of, I wonder if you can see my refrigerator. Yeah, there. 
the bottom of the freezer has enough headroom between the slide out drawers. And what I have in there is low enough that I'll simply put this in, freeze the chickpeas. I'll put them all in here, freeze them. They break apart easily if they are stuck. I put them into one quart Ziploc freezer bags. Some people don't want to use any plastic at all. I don't blame you. I just have no room for rigid containers like glass in my freezer. And so I, I do use plastic and um, they'll be frozen that way. And if they are somewhat of a brick, I can just tap them on the counter and it breaks apart. And then I'll end up with probably, probably four, maybe three um, Ziploc baggies of the chickpeas. And again, I'll use them for everything.